Foreign aid in all the wrong places. That is the topic of tonight's byline. How and where we spend our foreign aid dollars says a lot about Canada as a country. Now, some of you think we shouldn't spend any money on foreign aid. That's an argument that, right now anyway, you're going to lose. Fact is, most Canadians want us to spend something on foreign aid, helping people in countries that are less well off than we are. But let me ask you, what does it say about Canada that we gave roughly $1 billion in foreign aid to Muslim-majority countries that persecute Christians? This info comes from the Blazing Cat Fur blog, and the numbers add up. Funding amounts from CETA, our foreign aid branch, were matched up against the list of countries that are, well, listed as bad for Christians to live in due to persecution. We give money to all the top 10 countries except Saudi Arabia, and that includes Somalia, Syria, Iraq, Maldives, Pakistan, Iran, Yemen. Not on Blazing Cat Fur's list is the number one country, North Korea. It's number one for persecuting Christians, but of course, they, that's their own special case. We supply a limited amount of aid to that country in terms of food and humanitarian assistance, but no direct government aid. Now, some of you might be saying, big deal, we shouldn't give out foreign aid based on religion. And that's true, but doesn't Canada put a high value on freedom of religion? Didn't the current government appoint an ambassador for religious freedom? Yet here we are funding countries and regimes that are the worst on the planet for Christian persecution. The group that tracks this, World Watch, says this about Somalia, which received $53 million in funding from CETA. Pressure is increasing on the tiny Christian community in this Muslim-majority country. Islamic leaders and government officials publicly reinforce that there is no room for Christians and there is a strong drive to purge Christianity from Somalia. What about Pakistan, a country that received $72 million from Canadian taxpayers? Well, in addition to well-publicized church bombings, World Watch says this. The notorious blasphemy laws continue to have devastating consequences for minorities, including Christians. Women and girls from minority groups are particularly vulnerable, and sexual assaults against underage Christian girls by Muslim men continue to be reported. Canada gave $65 million to the Palestinian territories. Now, I bet you didn't know that because you're told time and again that the Harper government has abandoned the Palestinians and only helps Israel. But the latest numbers we have show the Palestinian territories got 65 million Canadian tax dollars. Now, in the birthplace of Christ, Bethlehem being Judea, or as most in the media will call it, the West Bank, it's controlled by the Palestinians. Well, in that territory, Christians are under immense pressure. From World Watch again, anti-Christian violence has increased, mostly caused by Islamic extremists, although Muslim-backed believers face pressure from family too. The authorities fail to uphold the rights of individual Christians, causing some to flee to safer areas. The organization notes that a group of Greek Orthodox nuns had to plead with President Abbas to intervene after they came under repeated attack. What does it say about Canadian values that we fund these countries, support them through foreign aid? Some would argue that by providing the aid to Canada, well, that, that Canada can use influence to push values. I'd argue that hasn't happened yet. We've been funding most of these countries for years and nothing has improved. In fact, Christian persecution has only increased. Islamiz Islamization and radicalization, they've increased. This is what our foreign aid dollars buy. I'm re not really shocked to find out that we're funding so many countries that are directly opposed to Canadian values. After all, we just seem to want to throw foreign aid money around at anything that moves. A few years back, I pointed out that we were funding about half the members of the G20, supposedly the 20 most advanced economies on the planet. But hey, our foreign aid bureaucrats figured that those countries couldn't live without our money. We've only recently pulled back from funding China with foreign aid, despite the fact that China is incredibly wealthy and owns a huge chunk of the American debt. That's how wealthy they are. Now, when I started suggesting years ago that we could cut China or cut G20 members, the foreign aid lobby claimed there was nothing to cut. And they'll argue the same with this. But here's my suggestion. No more money for countries that persecute Christians. Or let's expand it. You persecute people based on religion. We don't give you money. It would send a message on Canadian values. Now, if you agree with me on this, then I want you to email Foreign Affairs Minister John Baird. He's a man that's already brought, he's brought about a lot of good reform in that department. Maybe he can bring about more. You can talk, contact him. It's easy. John.Baird at Parl, P-A-R-L, dot G-C, dot C-A. That's John.Baird at Parl, dot G-C, dot C-A. Let's put some pressure on Minister Baird to see what can be done. And that's the byline.
the Coptic community in Egypt are not political players. They're not protagonists. They're, they are a nonviolent, persecuted minority. And we are deeply concerned uh, to see the kind, the, these um, mobs of extremists attacking peaceful minority communities, burning down churches. That was Jason Kenney from last summer talking about Coptic Christians under attack. Well, our next guest knows all too well about that. Reverend Majid El Shafi joins us from Toronto. He's a uh, well, Christian convert from Egypt. Uh, Majid, what do you feel when you, you hear that we're funding all of this in countries that engage in outright persecution? Uh, I'm not surprised. We've been fighting with uh, Canadian foreign affairs and we've been, I testified in front of the Himara subcommittee of the Canadian Parliament many times. And one of my recommendations is to connect our international aid and international trade. I will not only go for aid, but even the, our international trade to connect it to the improvement of human rights in these countries. And not just the persecution of the Christian minorities, the persecution of any minorities in these countries in general, include women's rights and so on. Mm -hmm. But the truth and the reality, there is two major questions here our government have to respond to. Number one question, if there is accountability for this money. See, most of the Canadians, when they give this money, they are thinking that this money is going to help the poor people. What they don't know, that most of this money end in the, in the Iraqi government pocket or the Pakistani government pocket because they are corrupted governments. So actually our aid does not reach the people that they are need aid. This is number one. Okay. You know, Brian, I went to Iraq one time with a Canadian member of parliament and a Canadian senator, and I was asking about Canadian aid over $300 million to Iraq. They didn't know where is it. Seriously, this is not a joke. They didn't know where the $300 million gone. The another issue that they have to respond to, why we don't connect the aid and the international trade to the improvement of human rights to these countries? I'm not saying to cut it, because when you cut the aid, you lose an influence in this country. I understand, I maybe, not, I, I, maybe I would not agree, but I understand the principle behind it. But why you don't connect it? It's like the but, carrot and the I stake. Mean, the, 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 the foreign aid bureaucrats would say, well, we're already imparting Canadian values with this aid. I don't think that they have been. No, I don't think they've nonsense. been putting the pressure on, and it hasn't worked so far. No, this is nonsense. And with my old respect, like I love Minister Byrd very much, and I love many people working in the foreign affairs, but our, our foreign affairs ministry is the most politically correct organization in the country. I don't doubt that. So you think that they're turning a blind eye to a lot of this persecution and problems. Uh, give us a concrete example. Where should they, what should they be doing then? What, where should they lay down the law uh, with these uh, rogue regimes? Uh, it's absolutely many countries around the world, like the list that you just showed on the TV. This is like from Iraq to Pakistan to Afghanistan, especially Afghanistan. You have no idea. Like in Afghanistan, we didn't only sacrifice money. We sacrificed blood. And yet, Hamid Karazai is the most corrupted president, and the Afghani government is the most corrupted government, and yet we're still giving them aid, and, yes, we, and yet we still sacrifice our children for them. And, so we, and, and, and he badmouths us. Uh, um, well, we are the infidels. Well, I, I, I don't know. The infidels, the one that helped him to put his behind on the chair that he's sitting down yeah. on right now, but we're still the Western infidels, so thank you very much. Uh, but the truth and the reality that uh, this is our tax money. This is, this is not the Canadian government money. This is not the prime minister money. This is not the foreign affairs minister money. This is the Canadian people money. And the Canadian people want to make sure that their money went to the right place to help the right people. All right. Reverend Al Shafi, good speaking to you again. It's we'll a pleasure. Soon.